Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Amory. We are uh, so blessed to have you with us this morning. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I am a little red this morning. I did go to the game yesterday. Uh, Mississippi State did win, but I do feel like a tomato this morning. So if you like Veggie Tales or have introduced your children to Veggie Tales, I hope they also like to talk to tomatoes. Um, so welcome to First Methodist this morning, and we are so blessed to have you here. Uh, let's go ahead and kick off our worship service with our call to worship. Uh, please stand, and we will sing all the verses to This Is My Father's World, found on page 144 in your hymnal. Please remain standing as we affirm our faith and what we believe as the church body it can be found in your bulletin as well. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for our next hymn, See How Great a Flame Aspires, page 541 in your hymn book, and the word should also be on screen.
children, uh, please come to the front for a special time with them. Miss Beth. This morning, boys and girls, I'm so happy to see you here today. Um, I was reminded this week of a song that I used to sing when I was your age in Sunday school. And I'm not going to sing because we all know I cannot carry a tune, but I'm going to tell you the words. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is its people. You know, we have a beautiful church here. We have beautiful stained glass windows and a lovely altar and some beautiful pews here. But that's not really who we are. The church is the people. We are called as God's people to preach and to teach and to go out into the world and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. When others look at us, we don't want them to see just this big brick building. We want them to see the light of Christ in us. So it's important to remember that the church is not just a building where we come every Sunday. You guys are the church. All of these people are the church. We all gather together as God's children, and we are the church. Can you remember that? And that is why it is so important for you guys to come each Sunday and to worship and to praise God. Let's have a prayer, and then I think you guys are going to help be the church by taking up the Rise Against Hunger offering. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for these precious children. We thank you that we are the church, that we're not just a building, that we can come here and learn about you, to praise and worship you, and that we can go out into our community and share the good news that your son Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary and died on the cross for us. We thank you so much for these precious children and their families, and we ask that you guide us and direct us as we go throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. before worship about his sermon today I regret that I'm going to miss it I know it's going to be a wonderful sermon because he shared with me some points of it and I'm thankful for his ministry uh, we've been praying with brother Wesley and we'll be glad that he's back from Salem let me share with you that I'm going to have to leave early I'm going to St. Mark to preach for them at 11 so I invite your prayers for that service too but let's join together in our prayer today Almighty and eternal God, our loving Father, we have so much to be thankful for. The abundant life you give us, the presence of your Holy Spirit with us, your guidance each and every day, 
your gift of salvation in through Christ Jesus, how you direct us in family and life and home, how you bless us with family, dear Lord, and celebrations in their life, wonderful things. God, we pray for each and every person in this sanctuary today, for all of our family members, for our friends, our neighbors around the world, here at home. But God, we're called to be your people in all places at all times, to love as you love. God, we're praying for people who are afraid and who are lonely. God, who are hurting. We pray for people in Ukraine, dear Lord, and we pray for those Russian troops, dear Lord, who realize they are in a losing battle, dear Lord, that they're against your will. God, we pray for a resolution to that. We pray for survivors, dear Lord, of the hurricane in Florida, dear Lord, for strength into life, recovering, rebuilding their homes. And God, last count I have is more than 300 deaths. I'm not sure about that, but God, you are. The truth is, though, that all who are in Christ never die. God, in a moment and a twinkle of an eye, we're changed at our salvation. We become new creations. Old things pass away. All things become new. We're thankful for that. God, we pray and celebrate life today. We pray for our nation and our leaders. We pray for your church universal, and we pray for the United Methodist Church and, dear Lord, those churches who are in the midst of making decisions about disfiliation and the direction that they will go. God, we ask for your guidance and your direction of your Holy Spirit and through your word. God, your word is life. It is certain. It is real. It is truth. And God, it is to be followed because it's your word. It, it is you, yourself, your teachings. God, we praise your holy name. We pray for local leaders. We pray for our teachers and our students in school. We pray for the elderly, those who are homeless. God, you call us to be in mission. We pray for our against hunger collection, dear Lord, and our actual mission trip, our helping, our packing, and God, other events in the life of this church. I pray for Caleb now, dear Lord, and for he and Kessie, dear Lord, and for their life and their family. I pray for his word, dear Lord, today to be, I know it will be your word. Bless him with utterance and anointing, and we thank you for it. God, we thank you in the precious and the holy name of Jesus, who so lovingly has taught us and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. from the United Methodist Women's Group. I know last week we were very excited uh, to hear that we thought the number was going to be close to 10,000, but I can say today that Miss Bobby wanted me to announce that it's actually over $11,000. So it's around that marker. So that is an amazing and wonderful thing, and they had so many uh, wonderful people helping with that, and just uh, what, a, uh, what a beautiful and Wonderful ministry. Okay.
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful anthem today. We are all very blessed by that. Um, I will say this. I did forget to mention, before I dive into the scripture reading for today, I did forget to mention that there was an insert in your bulletin uh, for a spaghetti dinner that uh, was supposed to be filled out and put in the offering plate. It's okay, because I did make the announcement after the offering plates were passed. But if you do want spaghetti that night, just fill those out and uh, come up here after the service and, and put them up here. And I won't tell anyone that I forgot the announcement. And you, and yeah. So uh, that, would be, that would be wonderful. Or just contact the church office so we know that you're going to come for spaghetti dinner on Wednesday, October 12th. Okay, our, uh, our scripture reading this morning uh, comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 2 through 6. Romans 8, 2 through 6. Hear these words. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit." To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit 
is life and peace. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I, uh, I was meditating a good bit this week on this, on this scripture, and I wasn't quite sure how to start today's message, um, but it is my favorite time of the year, which is that October season. The weather is changing, the fall breeze hit my face several times yesterday, even though it doesn't look like it. It was mostly sun, but um, the fall breeze was there. It was present. And whenever I think of a fall breeze and fall time, I think of bonfires and camping. And today, that's a little bit what I'd like to try and put our minds on, just to sit around a, a campfire together as the community of God and think about where we're going with this. Uh, because once again, in, in some of my sermons, it starts off a little bit confusing, but we get somewhere eventually. I promise we will get there. And, and as, a, as a youth director also, this starts off very youth directory. Uh, just giving you forewarning into what I'm about to speak on. Because the first thing I'm going to introduce you to is a small love story as we gather around this bonfire. A, a love story that started in 2016. 2016. When Caleb Holder signed up for a website called Christian Mingle. And he met his wife on said website. And uh, we began to talk to each other on that website, and eventually we went on video dates because she lived in Kansas at the time, I lived in the Delta, video dates. And the very beginning of our video dates, we kind of bonded over a certain television show. Um, the television show was very Halloween in theming, once again, the mood, campfire, fall, zombies. I thought we would all make the connection together. Zombies. We really liked the show The Walking Dead on American Movie Classics. And I watched American Movie Classics all the time when I was younger with my dad. And uh, it, uh, usually it was John Wayne and all that kind of stuff. And so it just so happened that after a, a long day of Western, something called The Walking Dead came on, and I kind of got into it. And then my my wife, uh, Cassie, when we were dating, we would go on video dates for the new episode of The Walking Dead. And so that's kind of what we bonded over in the early formings of our relationship. And so we're starting today with this idea of wh what is a zombie? Um, a, a, a zombie are kind of these creatures that can't think for themselves and they and they do this, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and, 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 and what do they want? They want to eat people. They, they desire flesh. They desire to eat human flesh. And it all kind of stems from this, this, this zombie transformation stems from a bite to the skin, and so once a zombie has bitten your skin, well, you are essentially also a zombie. I'm kind of proud of how I connected this. It is a disease of the flesh. It is a disease that, that started off small but kind of grew into this big thing. Sin is a disease of the flesh. Sin is something that kind of started, if we look at Genesis, with a simple bite. But it grew, and it grew. And in our scripture reading today, we see that there's this battle 
over living according to the spirit or living according to the flesh. John Wesley believed that this disease has been passed down from generation to generation after the the original sin, the fall of man. And that sin looks like something different for us, or maybe it doesn't look like something different from us than from the, the zombies we see in movies, because sin is that thing that numbs our minds to the power of who God is. Just like walking zombies. That's what I thought about this week. I'm not sure why, but I guess that's my young youth director mind at work. In the book of Romans, Paul points out that we are no longer to live according to the flesh. Because Christ has defeated sin and death. Christ is the cure to the disease. Christ is the cure to the pandemic of sin. This this sin that inhabits our bodies, that tells our bodies, oh, it's okay to lust. It's okay to feel gluttony. It's okay to be lazy. It's okay to stay in your sin. But Paul is saying, no, absolutely not. Sin is a disease. We need to live according to the Spirit. We have a cure, mankind. We have the cure, and the cure is Christ Jesus. Christ is the cure to the disease that is sin. Now, this is uh, obviously in the book of Romans... This would have had, the, uh, Paul is writing pertaining to not necessarily a specific church, but he's writing to Rome. And Rome lived in this polytheistic, militaristic, class-oriented society. There was a lot of sin in Rome. They were infected. They were a part of this disease. And they valued intelligence as well. And Paul here is trying to make an intellectual argument. He's saying that the only thing that can set us free from oppression, and trust me, Rome had a lot of oppression, the only thing that can set us free, truly free, is Jesus and life in the Spirit. Rome was an infected state. Rome had those multiple gods that they could pray to, all the gods that are also names of planets, Venus and Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune. They would pray to all these different gods. They were very harsh. And Paul is saying, do you want to be free from all that burden? Do you want to be, be brought into a family that is truly living, truly alive. Be set free in Christ. Don't be a slave to sin. Don't be shackled anymore. We are set free in Christ Jesus. We are set free from the disease of sin. The Holy Spirit is ablaze in each and every one of us as God's gift to us. While we are sinful in nature and being, the Holy Spirit does something in us that's not sinful. It refines that. It takes that away. It's God's fire that consumes us, our hearts to live according to His will. We're all infected. We all have this thing that we struggle with called sin. Every day we, we, we strive to be better. We, we, we pray to God, Lord, ignite that Holy Spirit in me. Take away this disease. Help me get through it. And God wants to give you the cure. And he wants to give you the cure to sin for free. He wants you to have Christ Jesus. He wants you to have salvation. What Christ did on the cross, it cured death. We no longer have that. Where is it staying? It's nowhere to be found. 
Jesus is the cure. So how do we how do we start this? How do we, how do we go about it? What, what is that spark in our hearts going to be? Well, I can tell you right now, I'm a professional at sparks. When I was nine years old in my little country home, I wanted to make hot chocolate. And I used a metal thermos to do it in a microwave. I am a good person that knows how to make sparks. And so I microwaved it for two minutes and 30 seconds. The microwave did catch on fire. This is also a learning lesson. I did run out of the house screaming, not knowing what to do, yelling, Dad, the house is on fire. And we did replace the microwave. It was very easy for me to start that fire at nine years old, not knowing the properties of metal in a microwave. And you would think I would have learned the first time, but not today, church. The second time, I forgot that Sonic hot dogs actually have aluminum foil wrapping. At the age of 12, I again set the microwave on fire by accident. But that one (laughs) was saved by the grace of God, um, we did not have to replace that microwave. So, sparks... Sorry, I'm laughing with you right now. Sparks, those are very physical sparks, but it can take something that small in our spiritual lives as well. What is going to spark your faith into ignition? into something that drives you, into something that sets you ablaze. Your spark may look different than metal cups in a microwave. Maybe it's a sermon you hear on Sunday. Maybe it's a worship song. Maybe you're just reading scripture one day because you feel lost and God comes down and takes a hold of your heart. Maybe God does that to light the spark that we need in our hearts. To have the Holy Spirit in us. Don't stifle it. Let it take a hold of you. Let it take a hold of you. Because the Holy Spirit, when it is ignited in you, is God revealing himself to the world. That is what that is. It is the cure to the disease of sin and death. And God gave it to us for free. Amen. Don't stifle the Spirit. We're called to live in the Spirit. To live according to the Spirit. To live in love, grace, freedom. The Spirit is life. The Spirit is life. So I know what you were thinking at the beginning of this message. Caleb, you're talking about the undead. You're talking about zombies. You're talking about death. We were spiritually dead before Christ Jesus gave us new life. Christ Jesus gave us new life. Jesus saves and offers us everlasting life. True everlasting life. He offers us salvation. So maybe... This is an odd message to hear today, and you're like, wow, Caleb gave a very youth director message today. Or maybe today does something different in your heart. Maybe it says, what is that spark going to be for me? What is going to ignite that fire in my heart? Lord, I want more fire in my heart. There was a, uh, there was a speaker 
at the conference Wesley and I went to. I, I, I promise you, if you choose to go with us next year, you will not regret it. And she was talking about the devastating wildfires in California and how they were just uncontainable, taking over everything. And it was just so such a tragedy about the homes and the land that was lost. And then she prayed to God, some, the speaker prayed something very different about those fires. She said, Lord, I want those fires to be the church. I want the church to look like the unstoppable California wildfires that are going on right now. I want the church to be on fire for God. I want the church to be ablaze for God. I want to spread the message of salvation that is life-giving to everyone I encounter. And that is my prayer for us today. May we walk in the life-giving spirit that is Jesus Christ and offer that to everyone we meet with our hearts on fire. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, as we invite the Holy Spirit into this room, is found on page 420 in your hymnal. Please stand as we sing it. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Please stand. Amen. All right, uh, just a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, our Rise Against Hunger packing event has been scheduled for Sunday, November 6th at 2 p.m. If you would like to be the hands and feet of Christ to the world in this community and, and just serve, uh, please, please, please be at that packing event. Um, there is an Israel trip meeting scheduled for Sunday, October 16th, immediately following the worship service. Uh, the charge conference is scheduled for October 17th at 5.30. Immediately following that charge conference, very important announcement on Monday, uh, immediately following the charge conference, we are going to have a church conference. Oh, my bad. Maybe it's, a, no, yes, 17th, 17th. Yes, immediately following that, we'll, we will have a church conference for the purpose of disaffiliation on Monday, October 17th at 6 p.m. The benediction is this. 
May the breath of God fall on you. May your hearts be sparked with something, something called the Holy Spirit. And may your hearts be set ablaze on fire for our loving Creator who gives us everlasting life. Amen. Amen. max $2.